Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets team. Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the Hornets head out to Eugene, Oregon to take on the 4-3 and three Oregon Ducks. Westlake and Oregon are currently the top two teams in the Pac-12 North standings. Hornets undefeated in conference play at 3-0. Ducks, meanwhile, in second at 3-1. Oregon is 4-3 and three overall, so believe it or not, they're doing better in conference than they are out of conference, which is a little bit of, of a surprise. Meanwhile, for the Hornets, coming off a tough win last week against Washington, a game that the Huskies probably should have won, but the Hornets made a nice fourth quarter comeback to get the victory, remain undefeated, and remain number one in the country in their pursuit of a potential national championship. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Welcome everybody to Autzen Stadium here in Eugene, Oregon as the number one 7-0 Westlake Hornets are set to take on the 4-3 Oregon Ducks. Quack, quack. So the Hornets are going to pick Tails. Obviously, we know Tails never fails. And it actually lands on heads. And Westlake will be starting with the ball in this game. Don't see that every day. And the Oregon captains are twins. Okay, we can make it work. Westlake started this season off in a dominant fashion, really destroying their opponents. For the past couple weeks, last week against Washington, the game before against Utah, this Hornets team has sort of lost a little bit of their mojo, and even though they are still number one in the country, I cannot see this team going undefeated unless a few changes are made. As Here's Frank Bray, the sophomore slot receiver with a gain of 27 and a big first down. Curtis nearly sacked, but took his time and found Bray, who switched his route up, and was able to get open for the big play. The Hornets have it very close to the end zone at the 21. Curtis and Daly in the backfield. Daly coming off last week where he didn't get too many touches, mainly because of his injury, as that'll be a fumble. Curtis tosses it, but it's deflected by the Ducks, and they will end up recovering it. So the speed option does not work for the Hornets, and Oregon will get possession. In the history of Westlake's program, which is now 10 seasons, they've never really gotten the speed option down. I'm not sure why they keep doing it. Third and inches, West in motion, handoff for Dudley. He is for first, and more! He trucks a pair of defenders and will be chased down by the defensive tackle, Octavius October, but still, that's a really nice run of 18. For running back, Kelvin Dudley literally trucked two defenders in the same motion. Got to admit, that's pretty impressive. First down here for the Ducks, or second down, sorry, second and eight. Dudley going backwards for a loss of two, maybe three. Lewis Kahn with the tackle, and Dudley is slow to get up. Kelvin Dudley injury would be bad news for the Ducks. He's the only one who's really gotten a touch so far. Oregon hasn't even passed it until now. On third down is Davis. He's not going to get it off in time. It looked like he was trying to go deep, but instead Cole Spencer comes in at the nick of time. And the senior edge rusher will get the sack, forcing a fourth down, and Westlake will get the ball back. Oregon running back Kelvin Dudley has an MCL sprain, not an injury that will keep him out for the rest of his game, so a massive sigh of relief for Oregon. As here's Curtis, he's going to get it over to his favorite target, Nigel Wiggins, his first catch of the day, and it'll go for 19, and that play will put Wiggins over the 1,000 receiving yards mark on the season. Curtis with 69 passing yards. Nice. Nigel Wiggins nearly averages 140 receiving yards a game. And the scary thing is, he's probably... He probably has about at least 200 more receiving yards than the next highest total in the entire country. As here's Curtis on second and four. He is Newton, who's open down the field for a gain of 24. Nobody covered Noah Newton. The Canada native, eh? And that'll put the Wesley Hornets inside the 10, maybe inside the 5, I couldn't really tell. Nope, not inside the 5, but the Hornets do have it at the 8. Just under 1 minute left to go here in the first quarter, as it'll be all re Ayaluko in motion. Tim Beck, the running back in the backfield, toss for Ayaluko, and he loses 6. Once again, the option does not work. Curtis had to think of something quickly. He probably should have just taken the loss of yards, but instead... He'll give it to Ayaluko. This is play number eight of the drive, second and goal. 
Here is Curtis under pressure trying to get past the defender. He does not. That'll be a fumble. It is picked up, however, by Josh McClelland, but still kind of scary. Henderson coming off the edge, getting past for right tackle J.B. Givens. And the Hornets definitely would not want to have a second turnover in this game. So very lucky McClellan was right there to pick it up. First quarter in the books. This game is tied at zero. But that could change here. 38-yard field goal attempt from Volker Guntz. And it is just barely in. That one was rather close. But the sophomore kicker Guntz will sneak it in. And Westlake is now on the board. Kelvin Dudley is not currently in the game for the Ducks at running back, so while, as I did say, he will return to this game, doesn't look like it's certain when he will return. Third and two, third and a short two. Davis keeps on the option, getting the first and more, breaking the tackle from Jones and friends. The past two plays for Oregon were passes. However, those were the first two passes from the Ducks all day, so... I would expect more of a run heavy offense as this one goes along as Davis nearly sacked by Spencer. Instead, it's Ray Johnson who brings him down. Oregon doesn't lose anything, but it's still a sack. And now we'll likely see the field goal unit out on the field. This will be a 39-yard attempt here for the Ducks to tie the game up at three. It's up, and it is a beauty right down Main Street as we've got ourselves an EA Sports Studio update. The Arkansas Razorbacks currently on top of the Auburn Tigers, 31-27 with two and a half to go. What an upset this would be. Arkansas is two and six, hoping they can clinch onto a bowl game. The Tigers, meanwhile, are six and one. Westlake really has to stop fooling around. This offense seems like they can do well today, but the effort level isn't fully there. Curtis on third down. Quick throw is caught by the speedster, Ayaluko. That would have been a touchdown if he did not run into Nigel Wiggins. Wrong place of a wrong time for Wiggins. Usually it's the right place of a right time for him. I mean, still a big gain for Westlake, but with Ayaluko's speed, that's a touchdown if Nigel Wiggins doesn't get in his way. Just under three minutes left to go here in the first half. Tied at three. But Westlake now has it at first and goal, so they can maybe change that as Curtis gets it to the open. Man, guess who it is? Nigel Wiggins with the touchdown, and the Hornets will regain the lead. Only Wiggins' second catch of the day. He's been quiet for his standards, but those standards are putting up record-like numbers, so that doesn't really tell the full story. Usually, Westlake has the luxury of starting the second half on offense, but not today. Remember, Oregon won the coin toss. They chose to defer, so they will start the second half on offense. As here is Davis. On the option, breaks the tackle from Jones, eventually tracked down by Marcus Lee, but not before gaining 31, and the Ducks have a great chance to put up points. A touchdown for Oregon would tie this game up, so let's see if they can do it with just about two minutes to go in the half. Davis running into his blockers, that'll be a sack for Octavius October, number 69, nice. I don't really know what Davis was doing. He was just running into his blockers. The running back was on top of him, and that creates an easy opportunity for Westlake to send pressure. Most of this drive has just been John Davis trying to create something with his legs, and to be fair, it has been working, but still, it's not an efficient way of scoring. They're finally going to try to throw it for the first time this possession, and it doesn't work. As Mickey Scales loses two on the screen, courteous of the middle linebacker, Justin McGee, That'll likely force the field goal unit to come out. Westlake will use the timeout. So here returns the field goal unit, fourth and eight. This kick from a little bit over 40 yards. I don't know the exact distance, but it doesn't matter. As it is good, Oregon's kicker now two for two, and they will cut the lead down to four. A minute 06 left to go here in the game. Hornets wait till the end of the play clock as Curtis scrambling, hoping he gets lucky, and he does over to Noah Newton. Newton with a big gain. Bringing it to about the 39 for a gain of 22. And the Hornets are starting to move it right away on this drive. They're not wasting any time. 30 seconds, actually now under 30 seconds left in the first half. Curtis is all alone in the backfield. That clock is ticking. Hornets do have one timeout as Curtis. Risky throw for Curtis Vincent, and it's caught down at the 21. Hornets don't look like they're going to use that timeout quite yet. This Lake is going to hold on to that timeout for as long as they can. They want to play this situation smart 
as here's Curtis looking for Nigel Wiggins. Wiggins will find the end zone for the second time today. So it looks like the timeout will not matter. And the Hornets will make it an 11-point game entering the locker rooms. After no points were scored by either team in the first, we had a high score in second. Westlake leads at 17-6 starting the third. Kelvin Dudley back in the game at running back. And he gets pounded, not gaining anything. Lewis Kahn with the hit. Westlake will be starting their drive past the 50 at about the 44 after a very nice punt return from all Rie Luco is here's Gibbs going backwards for a loss of four. Immediately brought down by Rob Henderson. There were like four ducks there in the vicinity. Gibbs had nowhere to go at all. Now it's second and 14 after the loss of yards. Daly for running back in the backfield. Wiggins in motion. It's going to be an option. Curtis keeps it, breaks one tackle, but still loses four more. Brian Daniels with the play. And now it's a third and 18. Second and 10 here for Oregon. Davis and Dudley, of course, in the backfield. The duo. As Davis will look to throw it under pressure. Scrambling! And is sacked immediately. Octavius October of his second of the game. Davis just ran into him for whatever reason, and now it's a third and long for Oregon. Both defenses getting off to a hot start here in quarter number three. Third and three for Westlake. They are three for five, 60% on third down. That's not a bad number at all. As here is Patrick Daly. He is the easy first and more. Daly gets by the safety, and he will be brought down at around the 14-yard line. Really nice run from Daly, who's had a pretty quiet game in this one. He had a quiet game last week, too, since he got hurt in the first quarter and did not play after that. This is the first big run from him in what feels like an eternity. Second and four here for Westlake. This is their third appearance in the red zone. They're currently two for two with a touchdown and a field goal. Here's Daly. Can he get in? Yes, he does. That'll be a touchdown. I didn't think he was in, but shoot, okay. And the Hornets will make it a three-score lead nearing the end of the third quarter. First and 10, a little bit under, actually a little bit over a minute to go here in the third quarter. 24-6 score is Davis breaking the tackle from Harvey. Eventually pushed out by Pino, but that'll be a gain of 25 for John Davis, putting him at the century mark in yards. Oregon has struggled all day at putting points on the board, but they're doing a fine job at driving down the field. And it seems like as long as John Davis gets the football, they're able to do a little something with it. There's Mickey Scales instead. He has the open lane since Westlake's defense was too focused on stopping John Davis. So Scales is able to take advantage, find the open hole, and get the touchdown. Here's Oregon for the extra point. This is a prime opportunity for go to go for two, and they won't listen. That's a bad decision by the Duckaroos, as we've got ourselves an EA Sports Studio update. Stanford Cardinal, the quick touchdown. They currently lead... Arizona by a score of 7 to nothing. Stanford ranked at number 10 in the nation at 6 and 1. Wildcats meanwhile at 3 and 4. Les Lake is letting this clock go. We're now at the 3 and a half minute mark here in the 4th. Hornets getting close to the red zone as here is Daly on second down. Shrugs the tackle but still goes backwards for a loss of 2. Courteous of John Bass and that'll lead to a 3rd and 9. I don't think Westlake has thrown it yet on this drive, maybe once. But now they're probably going to have to. Under three minutes to go. Third and nine. Here's Curtis. He is under pressure. Scrambling. He's going to try to run for the first down on his own. And he got it. Sliding at about the ten. Making it a first and goal. Gutsy play from the senior quarterback. But it pays off. Oregon is starting to use their timeouts. They just called their first. That's cute. The Ducks still think they had a chance in this one. As Daly will find the end zone. His second score of the day and I think that one just about does it I don't think Oregon's gonna come back from three scores just over two minutes left to play chances are not looking good for the Ducks got ourselves an EA Sports Studio update BYU taking on Washington and the Cougars currently are on top of the Huskies after a field goal here pretty much at the end of the first quarter of that one hey the Ducks are playing for pride gotta give them credit most teams would lay down and die they're still fighting as here's John Davis, he's gonna, whoa, what a play, one-handed INT for Andy Pino, and that 
will end this game, ladies and gentlemen. What a snag by the junior one-handed Odell Beckham style. Now that is how you end a college football game, ladies and gentlemen. 31-13, your final. Westlake gets the win. They improve to 8-0 and will likely stay as the number one team in the country. Good conference win. It was not a blowout, but the Hornets seemingly had control pretty much the whole game. Everybody played well. Peyton Curtis was very efficient. The run game after a slow start picked it up. The defense was very good in this one. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like button and subscribe. And as always, have a good one. Deuces.